Ooh. Hey guys, welcome back to Man Time. Today's episode, back out in the great outdoors. Uh, just got done doing a head-to-head uh, -head test with the uh, the steel and the Husqvarna. Um, if you missed that one, go ahead and uh, look back on my channel to the video right before this one. You'll see these two saws going head-to-head. -head. It was pretty sweet. Um, I mean, running chainsaws is always pretty sweet, right? But Anyways, I've got some, uh, some backhoe work to do behind me. I've got some stumps to clean up and dig up with the backhoe. Um, I've also got a few trees to take down. I'm still debating which saw to use here. Um, the saw, or I'm sorry, the trees look to be about 12 inches diameter. Seems to be right up the alley for the 031. It's still, I think, just a hair lighter um, than the Husqvarna 365. So, and all the work that I put into it, doing all the port work and everything. I mean, I put a lot of work into this one too, but it, it's hard to it's hard to pick a favorite, but. For some of the smaller wood, I think I'm going to stick with the 031. It's just kind of my bread and butter saw. I'm known in and out. and You can go back on the channel and watch me disassemble and reassemble and do all the work to it. So if you're looking to get one, you can see here I've brought the little Echo. I'm trying to like it more. I'm trying to give it more of a chance. But I don't know. It just keeps disappointing me. I'm going to have to go back to the 020. I may do something new with a, with a 200T um, aftermarket saw. There, I'm not spending a thousand dollars on a on a handsaw. I mean, it's the most useful tool out here in the woods, though. Don't get me wrong; you need a top handle saw, in my opinion. It's my favorite saw. It's my most used saw. It's lightweight, um, especially in the summertime. Just makes uh, cleaning up, doing brush work, and and you know cleaning up through the woods so much easier than carrying around a big you know 15 plus pound saw. But uh, since they quit making that one, they still make the 201, but there's a parts market for the um, 020T and 200T where the 020AV there isn't. So if you know saws, you kind of know what I'm talking about, but I mean that goes for any saw. You want to have a, a spare parts supply. Um, you can't just rely on the parts that are in the saw. You've got to keep spares. And coming up in a video here, I'll go through my tool bag and what all tools I, uh, I keep and take with me out in the field. Um, you need to have some basic repair parts for all the different saws you're going to be running throughout the day. And, and for me, I keep that in a big bag. And uh, I'll, I'll show you all the goodies in there in a video upcoming. So make sure to subscribe to, to see that one. But let's get the uh, let's get the backhoe back in here and start digging up some stumps. Welcome to man time.
All right, what do you guys think? Is the backhoe running better? Did you hear it uh, after we um, lashed those valves or put those valves in back into clearance? Um, man, I can I can tell an immediate um, change in the horsepower and the feel of the machine. It's uh, it's a lot more torquey. Um, it's able to use the front bucket a lot easier. Man, check your valves. I swear, if you've got one of these three-cylinder Perkins diesels or Ford diesels or whatever that don't have a lock um, on that valve clearance bolt, man, check it out. But all right, so I've got this uh, big sweet gum tree here. It's just got a bunch of dead stuff all around it. I think I'm gonna grab the 031. We'll get it cleaned up, and then we'll try to take it down. Well, let's uh, let's real quick talk uh, talk wedge theory and how we evaluate how we're going to put this front wedge in the tree um, and how that's different between each tree. So this tree is actually leaning back this way a little bit. I want it to go the other way, um, and also <clears throat> it's not it's not real big. All right, so I've got a 20 inch bar on this. Uh, you know, maybe. 16 or so inches um, and when I'm cutting this wedge I want to make sure that my bar is going to be able to clear and I can get a wedge in on the other side um, to start you know levering it over so for this particular tree I've decided I'm going to do a real um, small wedge in the front and that way I can get my bar in the back and have room for the wedge behind it um, while there's still just plenty of holding wood to try to make it go the direction I want, so <clears throat> It's just kind of how I look at Taking a tree down now. I'm super excited to see this 031 now that it's ported um, Actually going through a, a decent sized tree here, so let's check it out still a, just a 50 cc saw right but uh, you know it, it sounds great it feels great I, I'm happy with it
look at it from the back here. I think I'm as far as I want to go here. Um, let's see if we can just uh, just wedge it over from here. Got about an inch and a half holding wood, um, and it it looks to be straight all the way through. Yeah, this, this may be a case where I want two wedges. Um, or maybe we can remove a little bit more material. Two options there. I'm gonna have to get two wedges. Yeah, I've got it almost there. Um, but yeah, you definitely don't wanna panic. Um, the tree's not going over with how I planned, so we'll uh, keep going here. <laughs> yeah, you just can't get into a panic. Um, having the wedges there, doing it right, planning ahead. 
kind of estimating what the tree was going to do. I don't know if you can see, but the tree has a big bend, and it was kind of coming back and then going back that way. So, I mean, but it definitely held up a fight. Let's look at our holding material here, see how much we had left, and the situation up here with the wedges. Okay, so right here is uh, is where I left it. Um, man, this wedge, holy smokes. I actually had to, uh, to cut a little bit of it with my saw. That's why I carry these small wedges, is because, you know, when you're all the way in here and then you need to make another move, um, you know, they're, they're cheap, they're sacrificial, but they're short, you know, so smaller trees like this, they actually work really well. But um, these work really well too. They're just a little bit bigger. And when you use two of them like that, you can see they've got a side with these serrated um, kind of teeth on it. And then they've got a flat side. So you can put the flat sides together to go two at a time. But looks like I need to order some more of these guys. That thing is taking a beating. All right, what's next? All right, well, it appears I blocked my exit again. Um, but I'm going to run this 031. I want you guys to listen to it and tell me if you hear a different sound, uh, a, you know, look for a different amount of power. Again, um, just raise the exhaust port roof, cleaned up the transfers, and actually really cleaned up the intake and, uh, and lowered the, the deck on that just a little bit. Um, still haven't learned all the terminology. I'm trying to, though. But uh, we'll try to do a porting video here in the future, so. But yeah, check this saw out, listen to it. Tell me if you hear anything, you know, different than what it was in my, uh, in my previous videos. Vlog this thing.
Man, it's no wonder 50cc saws are um, just like the most kind of ubiquitous chainsaw. Everybody's got one, everybody uses one. Man, this thing is running better than it ever has, I swear to you. That sounded, it sounds perfect. It sounds like brand new. And, you know, I was, I was amazed to find the compression uh, was 150 psi. Just amazing. Um, Still have, I mean, it's got the still uh, jug piston, it looks like, in it still. And, uh, man, it's running fantastic. But, uh, yeah, um, that's going to do it for today on Man Time, guys. Uh, thanks for joining me out in the woods today. Hope you learned something. Get out there, have you some man time, too.